Okay, you guys, we are back. So I have gone and I've done my, what I call, again, my buffer zone around all of my outset pieces. This is all gonna be outset. So, and now I've drawn a line, basically a rectangle line, a little ways in from the outside edges. That's gonna be the outside, uh, that's where my background is gonna end. It's just gonna have a little bit of wood around it. So, and then the, the letters and the logo will be wood colored as well. So, um, I'm going to get after this. Uh, I want to show you the bit that I'm going to use. I've changed routers. I now I'm using the, the DeWalt 618. It's the bigger version of the one I was using earlier. I, I don't use exclusively DeWalt, but I like it. I, I like DeWalt routers. They're good. Um, I don't have any problem. I also like Porter Cables. So I don't have any issues. Either way, this just happens to be the, the bigger router that I have. I think we modified and put different handles on there, but uh, the regular handles are fine too. So uh, what we have in here is a 90 degree V groove. It's the one that we call our either our background bit or our cleanup bit, same thing, same difference to us. That's the one. Two flute, right? Two flute, 90 degree, quarter inch all the way. Um, Carbide. Carbide, solid carbide. We we use uh, carbide, so which I think is pretty much the. It's a white side bit. In case somebody wants to know, it's made by white side. Yeah. I think it's fifteen forty one is the number on it. I believe. Either fifteen hundred or fifteen hundred. I think yeah. it's fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred. Yeah. White side bit. Uh, One five zero zero. Really, right. really good bit. Excellent bit. Um, all right, so. I am going to, first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to do my outside line. And then after that's done, I'll take away everything that's in between that line and, and our outset pieces. Uh, theoretically, unless I lose control and wipe out something, but I'll try not to do that. So here we go. I've set it at about a quarter of an inch deep, something like that, maybe a little bit more, but I think it's... I think it's about right. Here we go. Sorry about that cord. I had the cord on the wrong side. Okay. All right, so now, this is going to be the tricky part on camera. What I do, guys, is this router is really, really loud. I am going to run my fingers along the edge of this board to try and hold that straight line. And I'm going to have to do it because of our, uh, our camera uh, issue here. Uh, and this being a long board and uh, kind of limited space. I'm going to go ahead and do this end of it. I'll swing it around and do the other end and uh, then Some guys mind. do stuff like that with an edge guide, but we do yeah. it freehand. Yeah, you can do it with an edge guide and that's fine. Um, I just uh, choose to do it freehand because that's the way I like to do it. So, But yeah, you could do it with an edge guide and uh, probably be more accurate. I'm sure you would be.
Oh, really awkward. Really awkward the way this angle goes, but that should, I should be able to reach that. All right, here we go. By the way, guys, we're in our studio. In case you didn't know, we're in Arizona, and it is about uh, what 110 today. Uh, yeah, so, it's a nice, comfortable 110. If I uh, if I drip if like I drip on the sign, you'll know why. <laughs> it's not because you're crying. It's not because I'm crying. <laughs> well, unless I do something really wrong here, then it might be tears. I well, if you do shed a tear, you'd call it sweat. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Yeah, if you want, it does make an edge guide to that router in yeah. case somebody wanted it. Well, they didn't want to take the <laughs> take the time to learn how to do that freehand. I'm going to go back now and I'm going to clean up um, and straighten out those lines. The thing that made that really difficult, guys, and I know you couldn't see it, but as I was coming around down that line, this right now is. Uh, probably 190 degrees I don't have gloves on and if I hold my thumb there very long it burns my thumb so that's the reason I was having this normally I would make those all in one swipe guys all in one line I try to keep it moving but um, I should have had my gloves on and this thing is really hot to the touch right now um, because of the temperatures that we have out here but fortunately I don't think I uh, have too much to clean up there. I'm going to blow this off real quick. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and see if I can straighten those lines out.
Santana. back and touch that up a little bit but those lines look pretty good I'm not too worried about that they look pretty good I may go back and look at them a little closer and touch them up but now I want to start my background process and this is something that my dad developed I don't know 40 something years ago um, he started making signs back when I was 10 years old and uh, that and then he taught me and so now I've been doing it about 40 something years that was about 1970 he started yeah, doing that. I, I was 10. Yeah. And so he developed this this style of doing this background. And um, and there's a lot of guys that are that are doing something similar to it. But I want to show you this is our standard kind of go-to background that we use. And it's just done a certain way with this 90 degree, this same 90 degree bit. So I'll do probably up to about here and uh, you'll get an idea of how to do it.
now they can see why you made that buffer line. Yes, that's exactly right. Guys, I think that probably gives you an idea of how I go about doing that. Um, now I'll go through and finish this up off camera. Then we'll come back and go to the next step. And uh, we're, it's starting to actually look like something now. So um, we'll be back in a minute. See ya. All right, guys, we are back. So um, what I've done here is I pretty much finished up all my routing. I finished up all of the cleanup or background. Um, and then I went ahead and kind of rounded the corners and put a bevel on. I didn't show that on camera because we're running kind of short on time. I didn't want this thing to go too long. But I think you guys, being woodworkers, I'm sure uh, most of you that are woodworkers know how to put a bevel on a board. And I just kind of slightly rounded the corner. So now the next step is I am going to get all of that extra sawdust out of the background. I want to make sure and use a stiff bristle brush and I want to brush this really good from a lot of different directions to make sure that there's no little chips laying down in that, uh, in that background. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because that background is all going to end up black. And if we leave a little chip back in there and we kind of miss it before we spray it black, then after we spray it black, if it falls out, it'll end up being kind of like a white spot. So, that is the reason I kind of make sure I get all of that stuff you out of there. Tip that up a little so you can get a good look at it now. Yep. Let me, let me zoom in on it. It's kind of, I was actually contemplating um, leaving this all wood and just sanding it off here. That's great. But um, uh, it's, it's almost a shame to cover up all that wood with black, but I think it'll, uh, I think it'll look a little bit better. Now another process that I normally go through is I look at this thing kind of from an angle and see if I've got any high spots in there. If I do, then I just use a little a little carving tool and I just take them down to make sure that when I go to sand off the surface of this board that I want to try and have as very as few of, of high spots as possible but actually it looks like my cleanup process worked out pretty well because I don't see a lot of high spots in there so we will move on to the next step here is what I use to spray that black now I use a couple different things, but this is primarily what I use. This is Marsh Stencil Ink. This is not black spray paint. You do not want to use black spray paint uh, when you're doing, at least my opinion is, you don't want to use any black spray paint. You can, you, you can also use Rust-Oleum Primer, um, but not Rust-Oleum Paint Primer. But I use primarily this ink. And the reason I don't use paint... That's a stencil ink, right? That's a stencil ink. Prime, uh, yeah. Marsh Spray Stencil Ink. It's available on Amazon, by the way. It is. Um, it's also available lots of other places. 
Um, the reason I don't use paint, and I'll just kind of spray this as I go. Hopefully this will... I'll try to follow you with the camera. Yeah. Normally I would do this uh, at a, maybe outside. So I'm going to go around. But anyway, so I'll talk as I'm spraying here. The reason I don't use spray paint, two major reasons. Number one, spray paint bleeds into the grain of the board to the point where it's what we call bleeding, but basically it soaks in to the grain of the board and then it uh, you have little black feathers that you can't sand out. That's one of the big reasons. The second reason is that um, it tends to gum up sanding belts. Oh, I know you kind of... So I'm just going to kind of... Yeah, if you use paint, even if you get by with, uh, with it not bleeding into the wood, when you sand it off, I don't care how dry it is, it's going to gum up the sanding belt. Uh, and you may only get one or two signs out of a sanding belt, whereas if you use ink, uh, you might get 30 or 40 or 50 signs out of a, out of a sanding belt. So cost-wise, the ink is far better to use than paint. Well, and frustration-wise, oh, yeah. when you've got a nice sign like this, and if I was using paint on it, and then all of a sudden I couldn't sand all the black off because uh, it bled into the grain of the board, man, that is just... Uh, then you have to make a whole new sign. Then it is heartbreaking, yes. So that is about it. I'm going to leave it like that. Yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah, I think that's plenty of black in there. That will show up really nice. So we're going to let that set. Being as it's about 110 degrees in here, um, we're going to let that set for about uh, 22 seconds and we're ready to sand. So <laughs> we'll be back in just uh, probably half a minute. All right, you guys, here we are. This thing is all dry now. And now we are going to sand it off. Now what I use to sand it off, I use belt sanders. But I have a little board that I made up that has some little stops on it that keeps it from flying on me when I'm doing my sanding process. I am using here a 50 grit belt. That seems like really rough, I'm sure, to most of you. But um, I, I take off almost all the ink with a 50 grit, then I go back with an 80. But you'll watch me because I'm going to do it right now. Oh, as soon as I plug my sanders in. I knew I was forgetting something. Let me plug, get some you can do it just by moving the sander back and forth, but it'll take longer. <laughs> yeah, that would take longer. You're right. you have to have kind of a light touch guys because you don't have a lot of surface here it with the, the 50 grit. Now we are going to use this little Porter Cable, what I call the armadillo. This has got an 80 grit on it and we'll uh, 
plug that in and we will sand off the rest of that ink and see what she looks like. Now some of you may be wondering, well why don't you just run that through a planer? Dad, why don't we just run that through a planer? Well, a couple of reasons. Number one, if you, planer knives have a tendency to, if you've got a sharp edge, they might chip part of that letter or anything in between as part of the graphics. And all you need is one little chip and the sign is ruined and you got to start over. So that's the reason I don't use a planer. I do, however, I have an abrasive planer. Uh, and I do on rare occasions I use it. Uh, it's, all it is is just a rotary sanding drum and I do on occasions use that. But a planer with knives uh, I won't use just because it has a tendency to chip out the letters and that ruins the sign you got to start over. You can imagine what it would be like if that little period on the dot com uh, chipped off on you as you were running it through a planer. So anyway, this is my favorite part, guys. I'm going to turn this up and uh, blow this thing off and see what it looks like. I love the way those look. As if by magic they come out. So there it is. There is our sign. Now what I do now, just kind of an extra kind of a little extra trick that dad taught me years and years ago. If you look close, you'll see some little tiny splinters in here, little slivers, um, little burrs that was left over when we sanded. So what we're going to do is we're going to blow it at the same time that we very lightly brush it with this old uh, pool table brush. Just a real soft bristle brush. Yeah, like a shoe brush. Yeah, shoe brush. <laughs> Okay, there pretty much it is. Got a little couple little pieces here that I'll kind of work on and just make sure that it is the way I want it. I think I need to sand it right there. I think actually what I'm going to do, since we're here, I'm going to go ahead and put a finish sand on it with my little, uh, my little skill sander here. That's a little orbital sander. A little orbital sander. I don't do this all the time, but on one like this, I really want a, a super finish on it. I'm going to go ahead and sand it down. I think this is a 120. Could be a 220, but I think it's a 120.
you need to have a light touch with that sander too. Yeah. So you don't go down and touch any of that black background. Yeah, you want to try and keep that thing as level as possible. guys so we're going to shut the camera off we're coming back for one more scene we're going to throw a finish on this and and see how it looks with a finish on we'll be right back all right you guys so this is what i normally use i i can use a couple different kinds of finishes but this is what i normally use okay, hold it right there um Krylon crystal clear has a nice uh good easy um easy spray nozzle on it i like it uh, it's, Where do you get that? This uh, we get it here at Walmart, and it's about less than four bucks a can, and it's made for exterior. It says indoor outdoor right on it, so uh, I can't see right now where it does, but trust me, it does. It says indoor outdoor. Now that's driving me crazy. It does say, oh yeah, there it is, indoor outdoor. I knew it said it on there. Um, so this is the way I put the finish on it, and I'll probably end up putting. I don't know seven eight coats on this again normally I do this outside not in an in a enclosed little studio here but for you guys we're taking one for the team here these are just little tack strips that I like to use to keep that uh, from Those sticking are carpet tack strips right right that is correct so now I'm just going to go around and I'm going to do the edge all the way around. And we've got a little Lazy Susan uh, apparatus here that my dad built just for this process. Anytime we're spraying something, so I'll just leave it pointed at you guys. I love the way this, the grain on this multicolored perfect plank. It's kind of like a butcher block. I love the way it jumps out when you put a finish on it. So there is our finished sign. Now probably what I'll do, like I say, I'll probably end up putting five, six, seven coats on, uh, something like that. Uh, in this kind of weather out here, that'll probably be dry enough to put another coat on in a half hour. So that pretty much does it, guys. That is uh, how to make Freehand routed wood signs. Um, we appreciate you watching. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, you can get a hold of us. I'll put my uh, my email on here, and our YouTube channel is Old Day One Hundred. And uh, we've got uh, going on four hundred videos that teach all different aspects of what we do here. So, uh, any questions we can help you with, um, just let us know. We'd be happy to help. And and tell, tell them we're not selling signs. We're just uh, we're helping them learn how to make them. No, we don't. We sell a lot of signs, but we don't sell signs on, on you know with these videos. This is all just for you guys to teach you what we do and how we do it, um, and that's what all those videos are all about. Um, everything from start to finish, and some sales stuff too. Anyway, that's enough of that. You guys um, have a great day. Glad you uh, stopped by. Hope this was helpful to you. And again, uh, get a hold of us if there's anything we can do for you. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Okay, one more thing. Just uh, I want to make sure, absolutely sure, that you guys that are my regular viewers, go check Colin's uh, Woodwork Web. Go check his out his channel and his website. He's got awesome stuff. Really proud to be working with him on this uh, on this project. I hope that was useful for you. I hope you learned a lot. Uh, again, if there's anything we can help you with, don't hesitate. Reach out. Leave us a comment or uh, my email will be on the screen and uh, we'd be happy to help you however we can. So uh, again, a huge thank you to Colin. I appreciate it and I hope we get to do it again, buddy. Thanks again and we'll see you next time. Bye.